Welcome to Organization and Management or MGT 111. So for today, we will discuss Chapter 3 or the Module 3, which is all about the organization and its environment. So for this topic, uh, let us define first, ano ba muna itong organizational environment? So, organizational environment is the combination of external and internal factors and the forces which affect the organization's ability to establish a relationship and serve its customers. So, every organization daw or, an, or in every business operation, meron tong uh, environment na tinatawag. So, nandito nga yung internal and external na kung saan both of them meron silang uh, effect sa operation ng Uh, isang business or na isang organization. So, is unahin na muna natin itong internal environment. So, the internal environment is a is company specific and includes all the forces and factors inside the organization which affect market operations. It con- it encompasses the climate, culture, machines, equipments, work and work processes, members, management, and management practices. So, internal, so ibig sabihin, ito ay nasa within the organization itself. Okay? So, nandiyan dyan nga yung different uh, uh, departments nung isang particular organization or ng isang particular business, yung, man, yung manpower nila, yung culture sa loob ng isang organization or sa loob ng isang business. At yun nga yung tinatawag natin na internal environment. And then, The other one is the external environment. So, the external environment includes all the outside factors or influences that impact the operation of the business. So, the business must act or react to keep up its flow of operations. The external environment can be broken down into two types, the micro environment and the macro environment. So, ito naman nga, yung nasa uh, outside, kaya nga external, di ba? Outside the organization na, but still, meron pa rin effect dun sa operation ng organization or sa operation ng, ng business. And this uh, external environment is divided nga daw into two types, okay? So, nandiyan yung micro-environment at macro-environment. So, ano ba ang pinagkaiba nitong dalawang to? Yan. So, let's differentiate what is micro and macro-environment. Unahin natin itong micro-environment. So, micro-environment consist of the factors that directly impact the operations of the company. It includes different forces that are specific to a particular business and are capable to influence daily operations and performance of the business for a shorter period. So, ito na nga yung micro. Eh, uh, somehow, related siya with the internal uh, with the internal environment. Okay, but But still, ito, yun nga, ito nga yung sasabi na meron silang direct impact sa operation ng company. Yun nga daw yung mga, uh, kumbaga, eh, yung mga ayun nga, forces that are specific to a particular business. And yun nga, capable to influence daily operations and performance of the business. So, kumbaga, eh, ito yung may direct na transaction doon sa operation ng business. Okay? So, ano-ano ba yon? So, una na dyan yung supplier. So, si supplier is part, under siya ng micro-environment ng isang organization or ng isang business. So, sino ba itong suppliers na ito? So, uh, suppliers provide resources to businesses like raw materials, machinery, or equipment, and etc. Their actions can impact an organization's strategy as they provide necessary inputs for production. In the absence of timely and adequate services, the production process may delay that result in more production time and fewer sales. So, may direct uh, impact itong supplier dun sa operation ng business. So, kung walang supplies na may po-provide itong supplier at hindi niya maibigay yung mga material sa kailangan ng isang manufacturing company or ng isang business to operate, hindi makakapag-continue sa operation yung organization or yung business without the supplies they need from their suppliers. Okay? Kaya siya part ng micro-environment ng isang organization. Next naman is yung customers. So, being the king of any businesses are the final receivers of the products or services. They are central to any organization as they contribute to, regen- 
to generating revenue by attracting more customers. So the marketing strategy of organization is required to be focused on the existing customer retention and attracting potential customers by satisfying their needs and preferences. So may direct impact din ng customers. Bakit? Kung without the customer, walang kikitain yung organization. Walang kikitain yung business. Okay? So, yung customer, kaya rin naman nag- nandiyan dyan yung business. Kasi nga, meron tayong kinikater na customers. Meron tayong ino-offer para sa kanila. Okay? So, part ng micro-environment yung customer. Okay? Kasi sila rin yung magpapat... Sila rin yung... Uh, isa rin sila sa factor kung bakit nag-operate ang isang business. So, without them, hindi rin makakapag-continue to operate yung organization or yung business. Next naman is yung competitors. Competitors or rivals of businesses can directly affect business strategies. So, it is very much required to conduct a competitive analysis of competitors to a competitive advantage that includes the, the knowledge of their USP or unique selling point of product and service offered. Also, a business can remain in a competitive position by offering products or services better than competitors. So, mayroon ding direct uh, impact itong competitors sa operation ng business. Bakit at papaano? So, maaaring yung yung mga strategies na ginagawa mo for the business as, or part ng marketing strategy ng isang business, eh, maaaring nakabase ka sa study mo compared dun sa competitors. Okay? So, sabihin na lang natin na na yung competitor mo, eh, parang mataas ang presyo ng mga produkto na ino-offer nila or yung product na ino-offer nung product or service na ino-offer nila so you as a business as, as also one of their competitor maaaring yung strategy mo ipo, gagawan mo ng paraan para mas mapababa yung, yung presyo ng product or service na ino-offer mo okay? so meron ding impact yung competitor sa operation ng business okay? Kaya part pa rin siya ng micro-environment. Next is the employees. Uh, organizations can achieve objectives through skilled employees who are also experts in their areas by hiring the right employees and providing adequate training and development opportunities to them. Organization can ensure access. So, part din ng employees. So, parang Ah, uh, ito ay nakapaloob din doon sa yung una natin kanina, ano nga yung una natin, yung uh, part parang part din siya nung nung internal, okay? Sa sa internal environment noong noong organization, okay? So, ito namang employees ayan, part din sila ng micro environment, okay? Kasi sila yung, without them, hindi ma-achieve ng organization yung kanilang goals or yung kanilang objectives. Okay? Kasi yung employees, sila, sila mismo yung uh, uh, nag implement ng strategies na gustong mangyari ng isang organization. Okay? Kaya part din sila ng micro-environment. The next is shareholders. Shareholders are those who invest their money in a company and also own shares of it. By doing so, they attain ownership of the company. Ultimately, they are eligible for return of investment on their on their share. This makes organization liable forward benefits to them from profits. Organizations also pay dividends to keep the interest of shareholders. So, Yung mga shareholders na to part din siya ng micro-environment kasi they are the one na yun nagpo-provide noong uh, in terms of uh, financial need. Kung baga parang nag invest sila, okay? Namumuhunan itong mga shareholders nung sa isang business or sa isang organization na kung saan yung binibigay nila na uh, yung pinupuhunan nila for the business is yun yung ginagamit ng organization para makapag-operate. Then yung kikitain, isahatiin dun among all the shareholders. Kaya part din sila. Meron silang kinalaman sa operation ng business. Okay? So, media channels also play an important role in the way organizations market themselves. Media has become the necessity of any businesses for promotional activities of its products and services. So, organizations are required to maintain a healthy relation and status with the media people. The company's negative image in the media may result in heavy losses. That is why organizations now have separate PR or public relations department to handle media-related activities. So, ito namang uh, media channels. Ito na yung... Uh, 
uh, like nandiyan yung mga TV network, nandiyan yung social media, radio, ayan, 'di ba? So sila yung mga nagiging platform sa kung saan doon natin pin- nilalabas yung mga advertisements natin. Okay? So aside from that, uh, through media then kung mahalimbawang merong magandang ginawa yung isang business or your isang organization, doon din na ipapakita kung yung dun, with the help of the media dun din lumalabas yung good image and then aside from the good image yung kabaliktara naman nito po pwede ring maging bad image naman na po pwede maipakita ng media so di ba kung halimbawa yung isang company na merong ginawang mali oh, so through media pag naibalita na so masisira na or pa, iba na yung nagiging image noong isang brand, isang product or ng isang service. So, kaya nga meron nga daw sariling PR or sariling public relations uh, department ng isang different organization kasi they are the one to uh, to create noong ma, uh, para mabawi ba yung bad image na lumabas na lumabas para dun sa isang brand or sa isang Uh, company okay or sa isang organization kaya merong PR so sila yung kubaga doon sila yun yung way nila para ma- mabawi nila yung bad image na lumabas about them okay so yun uh, may kinalaman din yun sa uh, operation and nakaka-affect din sila so once na, na merong uh, through media channels at meron yan nilabas na hindi maganda about the organization eh maaapektuhan ang business di ba so maaaring hindi na maaring bumaba ang sales or maaring kumonte ang bumili di ba pero kung maganda naman yung image na inaipalalabas ang media channels eh mas maganda rin yung magiging uh, effect nito doon sa business okay Next naman, uh, so we're done with the micro environment. Now, let's proceed with the macro environment. So, the macro environment of organization is related to its general and external environment that impacts the working style, decision making, pro- decision making process, strategy, and performance of the business. The macro environment is a dynamic environment that has a changing tendency. It has external factors that an organization cannot control. So, Etong macro environment naman is uh, wala nang direct control dito yung isang organization. Okay? So kung ano man yung maging uh, mag- mangyari with the macro environment eh kailangan na lang sumunod ng organization. Okay? So uh, doon sa man sa sa micro environment may tendency na may control pa rin yung business or yung organization unlike dito kay macro environment wala na siyang control okay so sa mga susunod mga other subjects pa ninyo uh, by next semester or next next year pala uh, matatakal nyo pa ulit ito okay so madidetail pa doon yung macro environment na yan so now let's proceed with the Pest and SWOT analysis. So, ano ba itong Pest and SWOT analysis na ito? Unahin na natin itong Pest or Pestel analysis. So, since organizations cannot directly control the macro environment, what they need is to manage it in a way that benefits them. The macro environment study is termed as Pest or PST, which lists the political, economic, sociological, and technological variables in the said environment. Some ref- some references may include environment, ecology and physical forces and legal factors which sums up to pestel. So before nga daw is pest lang siya but in some other books and then nung ni-revise na or nag nadagdagan na naging pestel na nga daw siya where hindi nagdag yung uh, environment and then legal factors. And then a pest analysis or formal, formerly known as pest analysis is a framework or tool used to analyze and monitor the macro environmental factors that may have profound impact on our, on on an organization's performance. So ito namang uh, pestel analysis na to is relevant nga daw siya doon sa macro environment. So with the reference kasi hindi na detailed yung macro environment. So in this pestel analysis may isa-isa natin kung ano ba yung nakapaloob doon sa macro, sa macro environment okay so 
unahin na natin. Ayan, ito po ang pestel analysis, no? So, nandyan ang political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and then legal factors. So, yan ang bumubo sa macro environment na kung saan yan ang gagamitin natin for the pestel analysis. So, unahin na natin yung political. The first element of pestel analysis is a study of political factors. Political factors influence organizations in many ways such that it creates advantages and opportunities for organizations. By contrast, they can put obligations and duties on organizations. So, yung uh, political, ayan naman uh, yung mga may kinalaman yan sa mga law implementations ng isang country. So, kung ano man yung mga policies na i-implement ng isang country, eh kailangan na sumunod noong isang organization and yet, wala silang control over that. So, sabihin nila natin na magkaroon ng uh, law in regards with the tax or uh, in terms of labor law or environmental law or environmental law or trade restrictions yan. So, meron kinalaman dyan yung political factor. Okay? So, aside from that, uh, let me give you an example. Diba? Kung natatandaan ninyo, uh, before, diba, kapag bibili kayo ng soft drinks, like yung Coke or yung RC, diba, nabibili nyo siya for uh, only 7 pesos or 8 pesos lang, diba? So, nung time na nagkaroon na noong train law, diba? Nung nag-effect na ang train law, magkano na naging presyo? Naging 10 pesos na, si ba? Lahat ng mga produkto na may lahat ng mga produkto na mayroong asukal eh nagtaas ng presyo. And that is because of the train law. And that's political factor na kung saan kung ano man yung mga law na ini-implement or uh, kailangan sundin eh walang control doon yung organization or yung business but to oblige them uh, to uh, to implement yung mga law or para so, ang, ang kailangan na lang gawin is sumunod na lang dun sa batas na ini-implement. Okay? And that is political factor. Next naman is economic. Economic factors are determinants of a certain economy's performance. All businesses and organizations are affected by and global economic factors. National and global Interest rates and fiscal policy is set around economic conditions. The climate of the economy dictates how the consumers, suppliers, and the other organizational stakeholders, such as suppliers and creditors, behave within society. So, in short, kapag maganda ang takbo ng economy ng isang bansa, eh, mas mataas ang purchasing power ng isang consumer or ng market. Uh, but kung mababa or hindi maganda ang takbo ng economy, eh, mababa ang purchasing power ng isang uh, consumer. Okay? So, ang tendency nun, mas mataas ang magiging sales kapag maganda ang takbo ng economy, pero kung hindi, eh, may chances na bumaba. So, sa, pa, kung napapansin ninyo, in this, uh, in this time, sa situation natin ngayon na we are in a pandemic, di ba? So, in terms of economy, bumaba ba yung economy, di ba? Kung napapansin ninyo, maraming businesses na nagsasara ngayon, di ba? So, yun yung tinatawag natin sa economic factor na kung saan mayroon siyang kinalaman or mayroon siyang direct impact doon sa operation na isang business. And the next is social. The dimension of the general environment represents the demography, characteristics, norms, customs, and values of the population within which organization operates. This includes population trends such as population growth, rate, age, distrib age distribution, career attitude, safety, emphasis, health consciousness, lifestyle, attitude, and cultural barrier. So, dito naman sa social, eh, ito naman eh, may kinalaman doon sa ating mga uh, customers or doon sa market, pinaka-target market where the business operates. Okay? So, sabihin na nga natin na uh, doon sa isang sa isang area, okay, na pinagtayuan mo ng business mo na nag-operate yung business mo. Okay? Uh, 
halimbawa men, meron kang franchise ng Watson ayan 'di ba so dito kasi sa social aalamin mo yung ko sino yung mar, sino yung customers mo ilan nang babae ilan nang lalaki this is all about the demographic information of your market okay so once na uh, alam mo na yung demographic information that gaya nga sabi ko gusto mo mag-purchase ng Watson at maglaga magkaroon ka na sarili mong branch ng Watson ayan 'di ba tapos yung market mo or dun sa location mo ipur na discover mo na puro pala karamihan pala na nandoon at majority ng market or ng consumers na nandoon is karamihan puro lalaki 'di ba so ang tendency is hindi ganoon ka, ka lakas yung magiging kita noong branch na gusto mo ilagay doon kasi alam naman natin na most of the customers ng Watsons ay puro babae 'di ba so ayun ayun uh, kap- uh, yun yung sa social factors that is under the macro environment okay Next naman is technological. These factors pertain to innovations and technology that may affect the operations of the industry and the market favorably or unfavorably. Technological advances have greatly changed the manner which businesses operate. So, ito naman technological macro environment. Eh, yun nga, from the term technology, may kinalaman ito pagdating sa... Uh, changes in terms of techno- technology, di ba? Kung mapapansin ninyo before yung mga groceries, parang mano-mano lang sila nag input nung presyo ng mga produkto na binibili sa kanila ng mga customers, di ba? So, as time goes by, nagkaroon ng scanner sa mga groceries para mas mapadali yung uh, pag-account ng mga nabibiling items, di ba? So, that's part of the technological macro environment. And aside from that, marami na ngayon nag-evolve na kung saan uh, kailangan lahat ng mga businesses sa kakasabay in terms of uh, technological development, okay? Kasi kapag hindi sila nakakasabay, may iwanan sila in terms of competition, di ba? So, kailangan nakakasabay pa rin in terms of technological development. And the next is environmental. Environmental factors have come to the forefront only relatively recently. They have become important due to the scarcity of raw materials, pollution targets, and carbon footprint targets set by governments. These factors include ecological and environmental aspects such as weather, climate, environmental offset, and climate change which may especially affect industries such as tourism, farming, agriculture, and insurance. So, paano bang nakaka-affect itong uh, environmental, macro-environment sa isang operation ng uh, business? So, sabihin na lang natin sa yan yung mga nabanggit dito, yung tourism, farming, agriculture, and insurance. So, kapag uh, yung mga different industries na yun na naaapektuhan ng operation, kapag meron tayong mga uh, acts of God or mga calamities na kung saan hindi, wala sa atin ng control. Okay? Doon pumapasok po iyon. Okay? So, sabihin na lang natin na ganito. Uh, meron kang halimbawang, meron kang store ng milk tea shop. Ayan. So, sa, yung milk tea shop mo, yung pwesto nun, yung, yung pinaka-physical store nun, is located siya sa isang lugar na kung saan laging bahain. Ayan. So, since bahain nga yun, pag tumaas ang tubig, hindi na siya mapuntahan ng mga customers mo. So, ang tendency, walang kita, hindi makapag-operate ng maayos yung store mo. So, yun yung uh, example ko for the environmental, macro-environment. So, may, uh, hindi, wala pa rin sa atin yung control or wala pa rin sa organization yung control pagdating sa ganong uh, instances. Okay? Next is uh, legal factors. Although these factors may have some overlap with the political factors, they include more specific laws such as discrimination laws, antitrust laws, employment laws, consumer protection laws, copyright and patent laws, and health and safety laws. Companies need to know what is legal in order to trade successfully and ethically. If an organization trades globally, this becomes tricky since each country has its own set of rules and regulations. So, ito naman legal factors. Uh, may kinala alam na to in terms of operation ng business. So, uh, pasimplehin na lang natin itong legal factor. So, para maging uh, legal yung operation ng isang pa, ng isang business, kailangan niya mag-comply with the uh, mandatory requirements na hinihingi ng isang go, ng isang sabi nating uh, local government unit. 'Di ba? Kapag nag-operate ka ng isang business, kailangan meron kang mga business permit. So, aside from the business permit, meron pa diyan yung sa uh, tawag dito, yung sa parang sa safety permit. 
kapag pa yung hinihingi kapag yung sa in terms of mang ka, kung sakali man na magkaroon ng suno ganyan kailangan uh, safe yung area then meron yang mga hinihing requirements sa kusan kailangan meron ka fire extinguisher may available na fire exit ganyan di ba and then mga sanitation permit yan lalo na pag ang ang business ways uh, food business di ba yan may mga ganyan yan so yun yung tinatag natin na legal factor sa kung saan kailangan para maging uh, legal yung operation ng business kailangan niya mag-comply with the uh, legal requirements sa hinihingi ta kailangan i-provide na isang business or na isang organization okay and that is yun po yung uh, pestel analysis okay So, i-analyze mo yung anim po na iyon. Next naman is yung SWOT analysis. So, while pest or pestel analysis focuses on the factors on external environment that affect the organization, SWOT analysis or stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats uh, focuses on both internal and external factors. So, yun nga si pestel more on sa external. Ito naman si SWOT both. May, uh, nagpo-focus siya dun sa internal and external. So, yung internal nga natin, again, ito yung macro, ay, ito yung micro environment. So, ano-ano yung nasa micro environment? So, yung nabanggit din natin na anim kanina. And then, yung external, ito naman yung nasa pestel. Okay? So, this analysis is a framework used to evaluate a company's competitive position and develop a and develop and to develop strategic planning it is designed to facilitate a realistic realistic and fact based analysis from identifying the organization's strengths and we- strengths weaknesses and opportunities and threats so ito naman e eh, uh, ginagamit para nga ma-evaluate yung uh, competitive position ng company okay so ginagamit ito kapag gagawa ka ng uh, strategic uh, marketing plan ng isang organization or ng isang business. Okay? Sabi nga, eh, ito nga, eh, realistic and fact-based analysis. Okay? And then, the primary objective of SWOT analysis is to help organizations develop a full awareness of all the factors involved in making a business decision. That is why organizations must use it as a guide rather than a prescription. So, ngayon, uh, ito nga ang SWOT analysis ay ginagamit natin kapag meron tayong decision sa kailang gawin for the business or kung sakali meron tayong gustong i-implement na bago or gusto mong magkaroon ng may gusto kang i-develop pa for the organization or for the business. So, ito po ang framework ng SWOT analysis. Ayan. We have the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So, ano-ano ba itong mga ito? So, yung strengths, unahin natin. Strengths describe what an organization excels at and what separates it from competition. A strong brand, loyal customer base, a strong balance sheet, unique technology, and so on. Any aspect of your organization is only a strength if it brings you a clear advantage. So, strength yan kung advantage mo daw siya against your competitor. So, halimbawa na yung sa isang, sa, kunwari sa business mo, edge mo yung kung ano yung meron ka na wala sa competitor mo and that is a uh, strength and then next is weaknesses weaknesses stop an organization from performing at its optimum level they are areas where your organization needs to improve to remain competitive weaknesses like strengths are inherent features of an organization so focus on your people resources systems and procedures think about what you could improve and the sorts of practices you should avoid so ito namang uh, weaknesses ayan ito naman yung mga something na unfavorable pagdating sa operation ng business okay and yan nga eh hindi nga yan nga daw eh, hindi kailangan i-retain syempre kailangan yan eh i-improve or baguhin okay kasi nga eh hindi siya nakakatulong sa operation ng business and most of them yung weaknesses kailangan yan uh, makita in terms of your people yung mga tao ba, yung mga employees ba within the organization or within the business eh competitive enough Okay, so doon mo malalaman kung yung people mo ba e eh, strength ba sila or weakness ba sila sa business. Then yung resources, the systems and procedures. In terms of systems, yung systems ba na ginagamit na isang uh, business for the operation is updated pa ba? 
outdated na ba? So, malalaman mo kung strength pa ba siya or weaknesses na? Kung masyado na bang pabigat sa business? So, in short, itong weaknesses, ito na yung mga masyadong pabigat doon sa operation ng business. Next naman is opportunities. Opportunities refer to favorable external factors that could give an organization a competitive advantage. These are openings or chances for something positive to happen, but you will need to claim them for yourself. Opportunities arise from situations outside your organization and require an eye to what might happen in the future. They might arise as developments in the market you serve or in the technology you use. So, ito namang opportunity, something good na po pwede mangyari sa operations ng business mo na nakikita mong magiging maganda yung epekto nito. Okay? So, sabihin na lang natin na uh, kasi yung yung strengths and weaknesses naka-base yan doon sa micro-environment which is in the internal while the opportunities and threats naka-base naman yan doon sa ating uh, external or doon sa macro-environment. So, so doon sa anim na nabanggit natin kanina marami doon sa anim na yun ang po pwedeng maging opportunity or po pwedeng maging threat. So sabihin na nga lang natin in terms of uh, technological macro-environment po pwedeng maging opportunity yun for the business. So halimbawa merong bagong labas sa technology na makakatulong for the operation of the business. So, that would be an opportunity for the business. Okay? So, punta naman tayo ngayon doon sa threats. Threats refers to the factors that have the potential to harm an organization. It includes anything that can negatively affect your business from the outside, such as supply chain problems, shift in market requirements, or a shortage of recruits. It is vital to anticipate threats to take action against them before you become a victim of them and growth is tall. So, yung threats naman, ito naman yung something na unfavorable na po pwedeng mangyari sa operation ng business due doon sa macro environment. So, sabihin na nga lang natin na iyon ng uh, bago pa kunwari mag, uh, mag-take effect yung train law, ba? Diba? So, nung panahon na nasa nasa Congress pa lang yun, or nasa Senate pa lang yun na hinihiring pa para maipasa yung batas na iyon, isa na siyang threat sa lahat ng uh, businesses. Lalo na yung mga businesses na nag operate na kung saan yung mga produkto na ino-offer nila yung mga sugar as ingredients, ba? Diba? So, isa na yung threat agad. So, yung uh, politics is a big threat doon sa operation ng business. But, maari ding depende sa kung ano man yung mga lumabas na law na i-implement pa soon, hindi natin malalaman. So, kung meron man, they could be a threat or they could also be an opportunity for the business. Okay? So, how to do a SWOT analysis? So, first, decide on the objective of your SWOT analysis. Siyempre, kaya, di ba sabi nga natin, ginagamit nga natin itong SWOT analysis Uh, para ma i mala kapag mag mag decide uh, tayo for the business or kung meron tayong something na gustong i-implement for the business or may meron tayong gustong idagdag okay so decide mo muna kung ano ba yung objective ng iyong SWOT analysis bakit mo gagawin yon are you going to make a decision for the business or meron ka bang gustong idagdag for the business or gumu- gustong gumawa ng another product line and so kailangan clear ang objective mo diyan the next is research your business industry and market so kailangan alamin para tong uh, kumbaga sa strategic marketing process para itong uh, yung situation analysis you are comparing your business to its competitors okay next is construct a SWOT analysis matrix so ano ba itong SWOT analysis matrix yon tulad din noong uh, pinakita ko kanina yung uh, yung merong SWOT na para naka window type di ba na merong apat na sides. So, ganun lang uh, yung uh, SWOT analysis matrix. And then, establish priorities from the SWOT. So, uh, eto naman, kailangan mo mag-focus kung alin doon yung mga to pwede mong mapagtuunan ng pansin na may maka- magandang effect or mas makakatulong for your objective. So, most of them is yung mga positive. Okay? Uh, most probably yung 
uh, strengths and the opportunities. So you have to capitalize on that. And then next is develop a strategy to address issues on the SWOT. So di ba meron tayong weaknesses and then threats. So kailangan mong ma-address yun para ma-resolve yung issue with that and then for the threat para maiwasan and then for the weakness para ma-develop pa. Okay? And that is the process of making your uh, SWOT analysis.